Hello guys, welcome back to Clockwork Dandy. It is the channel that keeps on breaking down the anime of this very intense anime season. In a few weeks, you are going to be getting my ultimate anime spring wrap up, which are my free anime of the season. And I tell you, it's not as easy as I thought it would be. Initially, I came up with my halfway point. Do check out the halfway review because I seemed a bit more 100% on how things were then. And now things have gone up in the air and I'm actually dreading ordering my top three because it's actually difficult so make sure you guys are subscribed for that because you will find out what four anime i will will break down next season i think i've got something for everyone i also think i'm breaking down lighter anime let's just say that something a bit lighter because i want to discuss something about 86 a little bit later on and i'll be telling you what my personal watch list will look like so the anime i'll watch in my own time maybe i can persuade you to watch a few different things and at least tell you about what is coming your way next season it does look like it's going to be the season of isekai though to make sure you are in the loop there is a good way of joining the discord server and getting yourself notified whenever a video goes up on the channel this will allow you to stay in the loop and also be aware of any other projects that i may have ongoing so episode eight an intense episode to follow the intense episode from last week everything about 86 is just heavy it's getting heavier and heavier i've got a lot to discuss at the end so make sure you tuned in for that because i'm starting to realize a few things indeed there has been a second call confirmed it seems we are getting another 11 episodes coming out in full i'm gonna be honest with you guys i don't know if i will be returning to break it down the season didn't do very well on the channel it's not pulling in a great deal of views and a few people weren't so happy with the way i was breaking it down so i really will have to go away think about it so i may not return for the second breakdown for you guys discuss below if you think i should return for it but we are following off the back of the episode of working out that this really is a death camp i'm not surprised at this point nothing you throw at me is surprising me because sam magnolia really is just a horrible place in general but also thank you guys for telling me that this anime has a lot more material out there so we've got a lot more places to go i was really worried that it would just end with everybody dying but i'm also not a hundred percent that this may not be a thing i did wonder if an anime as popular as 86 would really be an anime that ended badly but maybe this is the anime that proves that you don't always need to end in a good way so i'm going to be very curious to see how it ends but i'm also not raising my expectations for a happy ending because i don't think it's possible i honestly don't think the anime the way it set itself up is hoping for a happy ending i don't think it's even possible to have an happy ending we did get the connection with Shin's brother last week, confirming that he indeed is on his way. He is a shepherd and is coming for Shin. It's bad news for absolutely everybody in Spearhead, but also good news for them because they also, as we find that this episode, see death as more like a freedom. So they're happy that it's finally kind of coming their direction. But death is coming personally for Shin. Raiden is asked if he's going to be hanging himself or dying tomorrow with him, but there is no chance that this guy would have said anything otherwise he's already given us a speech on how that they take their lives their own way they die by their own hands so there wasn't a chance that he would give them any other option and as well he would happily follow reaper as a leader until the very end i keep wondering when how is the tide gonna shift when is that spark gonna kick into action when are things finally gonna gear down and less towards the total annihilation ending maybe this is it i mean a few people were getting angry at attack on titan maybe you should be reading 86 instead vladelina is now awakened to the reality she now sees the truth of everything we saw last week the turning point for the character she can no longer go back to anything she's never going to go back especially this week as well there's a lot of things she can no longer go back to being and we can see the way that she's looking at these mission reports that it was right out in the open it's hidden in plain view the truth is right there you can see it again and again spearhead 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 it's all hidden in plain view and she just never saw it but can she really do anything can the pressure at this point of trying to prevent a zero percent survival rate is approaching fast and it just doesn't feel like we can do absolutely anything 86 to me has just been a uphill struggle where it just feels hopeless every episode feels hopeless 
but that is the point because we're supposed to be emulating the situation that the people of 86 find themselves in their situation is pretty hopeless they cannot change it nothing's gonna change the line if things were that easy we wouldn't ha these things wouldn't happen as well i mean this is no true words are being said i mean this plot if it could be shuffled by something so easy as vladelina simply yelling at people we wouldn't be in the situation that we're actually in right now so let's discuss an inevitable sparring that was bound to happen at some point annette and vladelina we have seen tensions between these two building and building every episode until we finally hit our boiling point i was expecting this one way or another annette reveals that she had a link to a 86 family i think there's even a b even bigger link later on down the line as well which is gonna we're gonna come back to but she initially was said that they were intermingling just fine even before the war they were actually close friends close families so there was none of the we're gonna sacrifice you guys before the war nothing like that happened something happened during a war that made them suddenly see these people as lesser beings not even human that they were just gonna go and sacrifice but it's nice to know that things weren't always the way that they are now annette tells us that she was bullied for hanging out with people who were in the 86 these people who are not like her it shows us just how innocent the children initially were that we had this 86 boy who didn't really know what was going on he just wanted to play and then suddenly he couldn't work out why he was no longer being played with and i don't feel bad for Annette I I know um I'm, I'm, I'm gonna apologize because I know people don't like it when I say stuff like this but I can't feel any sympathy towards Annette I really can't and I'm, I'm sorry about this I really can't do it I feel bad for the child who I think is Shin as well I do think it's Shin who ends up being shouted at and ends up being sent away to camps the very next day Annette says that she didn't save she stops her actual dad who was trying to open he was open to saving them so her dad was open to the idea of taking them in but she stops the broken biscuit on the floor showing us that things are irreparable once things broken you can't really replace it you can't go back to the way things were during this entire segment they do not face each other the guys don't see eye to eye we have one sitting back facing a wall the other one facing the camera showing us that they just have different points of view they're not seeing eye to eye and i just got to keep asking myself the question because i know that annette says that vladelina is as guilty as her but i i just can't see it no one's gonna like me for this as well but annette was somebody who told herself that there's nothing i can do so therefore i won't do anything vladelina knows she can't do anything she also maybe hasn't done anything up until this point but she's trying at the same time i know she's not going to have any effect and she again i can't blame her because it does seem like there's nothing she can do there really doesn't feel like there's anything she can do but she also hasn't given up it seems like she hasn't given up and she's trying to rattle the cages she's shouting at people she's trying to do everything that she thinks that all that all she can actually do she can't do anything bigger but i just can't see the likeness to her being equally as guilty as annette who just has given up on everything and doesn't even want to see humans as humans because at least valina is seeing them acknowledging that these are people these are people we've got to try and stop what's going on we get more dark story as we start to understand how the power raid was born and again it's just it doesn't surprise me now it's just more people have died it's more innocent lives it's children have died there is no regards for their lives anymore but i'm not I'm not shocked because Sam Magnolia is being shown to us as just being absolutely horrific. It's built on blood, but not their own blood. Annette ends up losing her dad, who actually feels remorse. He feels guilt. He doesn't want to continue, so he ends up taking his own life. He felt like he deserved to die. Annette twisted personality at this point. I know it is a result of the conditioning of Sam Magnolia. I am completely aware of this. But she ends up taking over the child experimentation. She ends up taking on her father's burden. Well, she tells Vladelina that you're just basically keeping them alive. That, so you're equally as bad as me. But I don't think this is the case. Spearhead was always a unit they were considering as a death camp. They were always constantly being... Units were being sent there. If they were alive for too long, they were being sent there. The best of the best being sent there. So they wouldn't uprise. So they were being sent into the worst situations. So they wouldn't rise up against the, the people of San Magnolia, people in charge. They were always going to be ordered to die without even having Vladelina's interference. So just saying that it's your fault that they're now getting that order. They were always going to get that order. They were always going to die. 
The camera angles during this sequence are tilted to show us that something is completely wrong about the sequence. Everything is off. There's twisted logic. We're not viewing the situation from a straight, level-headed approach. Annette and Valina finally parting ways. Annette telling her she absolutely hates her and doesn't want to see her ever again. And I shed no sadness over this parting. I didn't like her. I just did not like Annette. The music at this point, we get the trilling on the piano, the very low end is very, very present, feeling of twisted, dark, edgy nature, building very gradually, it's very intense. Sawano's score is amazing, I cannot fault him, I love his score for 86. Then we're going to move into another segment which really just wound me up even further. We have the Vladlina and the uncle sequence. He's finally saying it in black and white, so but kudos to him to finally just saying it, you're not lying to her anymore, you're not sugarcoating anymore. We do get a nice composition, seeing the light, the dark, the different levels. We have a pillar physically in the way, so we can see there's a physical difference between the two. They're not on the same page. They are not the same. The uncle at this point is also higher up. He's standing on the stage in the light, showing us the idea of a hierarchy. Sam Magnolia simply wants all the 86 dead to hide their guilt. They want to bury the burden. If they are all dead... Nobody's ever going to know that we did anything bad because they're dead. No one can say anything. It's that whole proper logic. If they're all dead, nobody can complain. They don't want to be known as oppressors, even though that is no more than what they are. Sam Magnolia is a, a horrible oppressor. It is nothing but twisted logic. The camera angles once more, showing us this entire sequence is stilted. It's at an angle. We get the composition flip completely as... Valadlina now on stage at the higher has the higher ground. She calls out the fact that this is a nation who should be protecting. Where the uncle then, at now on the lower level from the darkness, tells her that the country killed Saint Magnolia. It is full of fools and villains, so you cannot expect anything more. It's light and dark, the pillars are still in the way. It's the idea that this country is bad, so you can't expect anything different. They are just that's just the way things are. He does say that hope and despair are essentially the same thing. She wants something that she cannot have. It's hope at the same time as a despair. But he does say that oh, well, he will allow her to have a freedom of speech because he knows that it's not going to change anything. She can't physically do anything. So he's just going to leave her be. I did wonder if he was going to have some consequences for her. But we get finally some calm sequences where Shin shows showing off how calm he is that everybody's going to die. You simply cannot blame somebody if their day, day comes sooner. He does say that there's simply just nowhere to run. So it's just kind of the path is going forward at this point. There's no going back. And he does say that they're just going to be free in death. So it's a happy thing. Death is a happy thing. It's a freedom. They finally get away from the oppression. Shin's mo motive now to kill his brother. Vladina begging him not to fight his own brother. But that's also where we get the confirmation that he is indeed a shepherd. But Shin finally parting ways. He asks her no more communication. This is it. He doesn't want her to hear his brother's final words. I think he's expecting the final words to be, it's your fault. But I don't know if that will be the case. He knows that Vladlina will be the one to remember them all when they're gone. So perhaps he's trying to preserve the memory she has of him. And he doesn't want her thinking that it's, he's at fault. For the reason that his brother may be the state in the state that he is. He tells her to live. He actually gives her instructions to go somewhere. And then he try he's trying to spare her. So he's trying to get her to live, go on, be free, you know, go here, you'll be safe for a little bit. However, let's now go to the flip side. Most of the episode this week and takes place from Vladalina's point of view. The simple montage now we're getting is the final days, essentially. It's the final time the 86 now having their marching orders. There's only five people left at this point. We're not going to come out of this alive. It is the final day. We're going to live with no regrets. And oddly enough, to get a bit of juxtapositioning going on, we have a very happy music sequence going on. We have happy faces, people cleaning, just continuing. It's a very uplifting musical piece, which sounds absolutely gorgeous. We see train tracks, the visual leading into the brighter places, somewhere different. The train tracks being the journey that we follow and the end is maybe nearing in sight now, but it seems like it's a light at the end of the tunnel in a sense. We see the empty food hall, seats of the falling, empty chairs, empty tables if you want to have it. The food is good, so at least they're going out with a very good meal. But Vladalina definitely obeyed Shin and never called back. She never decided to go against Shin's wishes and didn't wish them a farewell they do seem initially sad but it is all hidden within jokes so you can't really tell who's being honest but i do think they really are a bit sad that she's not saying goodbye to them where we find some candy sending them off to their final resting places the entire sequence is 
I can't really buy a major sequ- a major scale. Unlike the flip side when we had Balina sequences, which were accompanied by the lower the lower end, the trills on the piano. So it's a bit of a contrast on the piano completely. We have three episodes to go. It doesn't seem like it's ending this episode, but it does seem like we might end at a cliffhanger for quite a a very heavy cliffhanger. Perhaps they're all going to die. I don't understand how we're going to get 11 episodes still. In my head, it just seems like we are barreling towards the conclusion that everyone's going to die. The entire sequence is initially feeling like an end sequence. We've got the rundown, the montage of their final days. It feels like an end. It feels like we're gearing up for the end of the season. If you told me there was another 11 episodes, I'd be like, but on what? Treated to a visual of Shin's whiteboard, now completely clean. He's given up on that idea. He knew it was never going to happen. Where the final sequence are, raises quite a few questions. We are treated back to Shin's brother. We see that he did truly love his brother. However, the shock, the loss of losing his parents, the stress of everything, the idea that, you know, you're also now next, your head's now on the chopping block, you're also going to die. He snaps completely. He completely snaps. Um, we see baby Shin. And young Shin is definitely the boy that Annette called out, the boy that Annette was playing with. She did state two boys used to live next door. We also know that both of them lived in the first because Shin recalls seeing the fireworks from the first. We do see during the entire horrific sequence of Shin being strangled, his brother over and over again, even shouting, 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 saying it's all his fault over it. It's not true. It's not true. It's not true. Over and over again, we can see that there's that conflict, that mental conflict between it. His actions do not match his words. Shin seemingly is saved by Vladelina's uncle. I could be 100% wrong. This could be Annette's dad. I'm not sure, but it definitely looks like Vladelina's uncle, which is a surprise that he would jump in the way and try saving him because it's just another 86 at the end of the day. Why are you saving this ki- this kid? Because to you, you've even admitted that having them dead is better for you guys. It's what the country wants and the army must put into action what the people want. Where we could basically see the mental state of Shin's brother just being completely driven to madness, being in a completely unstable state. He's terrified by the prospect of dying as well and he's lost his parents and his brother is just going, why did she die? Why did she die? And he's just snapped. It's just, it's gotten too much. He snapped. We are treated by a, to a visual of the shepherd Shin's brother, what he's turned into. Heading straight for Shin. It looks like the next episode is just going to be the showdown. I don't understand how we're going to have 11, two episodes of this sequence still. So something's got to happen, but I don't know what. And that essentially is the end of that episode. 86 is heavy it's very heavy but it's getting to the point where i phys- i physically can't tell you how it's gonna end other than everyone's gonna die i can't see a way around it i can't see how the is gonna change anything so it does seem like this could just be that one anime which ends bad and people love it because it's finally an anime which just ends bad there are 11 episodes in the next course so something has got to give I don't know if I'm enjoying 86. I can't tell anymore because every episode just feels more and more hopeless. It feels depressed. There is no light at the end of the tunnel. I like Vladelina and I feel bad for liking Vladelina because people said I was bad for taking her side. I don't hate her for not being able to change anything because it's not within her power. So I don't hate her for not being able to change anything. So I don't know if I'm going to be with you guys for next season. I will be watching it though. I will definitely see. I mean, I started this journey. I'm definitely going to see the journey through. But you guys will have to let me know in the comments if you would want me to continue breaking down into the next season or not. So make sure you're taking care of yourselves, guys. I will join you again next week. Have a good day, guys. Bye-bye.